Hi, thank you for joining me. Today I would like to bring to you some of the movies I love. Some of them are really old and I haven't seen in years. <laughs> so the plot is a bit fuzzy, but anyway, I'm not gonna try to spoil the movies anyway. I'll just briefly touch upon what the movie is about and why I like it. And yeah, my, my my goal here is to bring these movies to your attention if you haven't heard of them although some of them are like most of them are like classics so you know if you haven't heard of them um i'll be surprised but just in case yeah i would just love to bring them to you and yeah i encourage you to check them out because they're absolutely wonderful and um, many of them are really sad in many ways but they're also they're full of love and uh, teachings and education really um, so I have a, a list here because there's lots of them that I want to talk about I'm not really sure with which one of them to start but I, th I think I'm gonna start with Candy it's a movie from 2006 um, it's with Heath Ledger and Abby Cornish I believe her name is and yeah it's the movie after which uh, i f absolutely fell in love with uh, Heath Ledger not that i didn't like him before as an actor or anything like that but that movie is absolutely heart-wrenching it's a story about addiction love uh, <laughs> of course um but yeah i'll just i'll check the imdb and i'll, I'll read you the um, what what it's it about briefly so he says a poet falls in love with an art student who gravitates to who, to his bohemian li lifestyle and his love of heroin candy is also a play on the name because it's the name of the character but it also has to do with the addiction you know for the for heroin candy you know hooked as much on one another as they are on the drug the relationship alternates between states of obli of, obli of oblivion self-destruction and despair it's, it's absolutely it's an absolutely heartbreaking movie and the reason why i love hit ledger for this every time i think about hit ledger i instantly think about this movie not about his blockbusters for which he is obviously so well known um, because for me you, you get to see his portrayal of this human who battles with addiction and there's also this tagline you know more is never enough and uh, i think jeffrey rush is in the movie his name i'm terrible with names so if you don't know by now if you've been watching if you haven't been watching this channel but yeah um and yeah he's a professor professor i think um and kind of like a dealer as well for uh, the character Heath Ledger plays and there's a, a line in that like a scene in the movie where he says um, when you, you want to give up or when there's a point when you don't want to give up and you can and also when you want to give up but you can't anymore so I think yeah it's something along those lines but yeah it's absolutely A heart cutting story it's the portrayal of the couple and things they have to deal it's you know if you deal with addiction if you've had trouble with drugs uh, you might be triggered by this because there's you know scenes in the bathtub when they're you know taking drugs and stuff there's not really major spoilers because you know but yeah, I highly encourage you to see this movie. Um, this, along with Brokeback Mountain, I think it's one of my favorite with Heath Ledger. But yeah, this for me is the movie that really put him on the map for me. Although it's like just before he passed away, I think, a few, or a few years, I think. I can't remember when he passed away, in 2009 or 2007, I, I forgot. But yeah, it was like, one i think personally i think it's one of his best movies the story obviously brings uh, helps 
a lot, obviously, because if you don't have a good story, the performance can't really... Yeah, I mean, you have to have something there to to act on, but yeah, it's just... It, yeah, I'm just dragging this on. Um, you just have to see it. It's a absolutely, absolutely stunning movie, heartbreaking. Um, I guess I'll say the cinematogra cinematography is not the best. Um, I think it's okay, but it's, it just focuses on their addiction and the struggles they go through. And yeah, I don't want to say about the ending, but yeah, you just have to watch it. <laughs> highly, highly recommend it. Um, I'll, I also have a few mini series in here. Um, so yeah, um, I'll continue by mentioning two of the movies I've already made reviews on, extensive reviews on. Um, and I'll just briefly mention them, hopefully. And these are Call Me By Your Name. It's, uh, this movie is made after, adapted after a novel by Andrea Simon. It's one of my favorite novels and favorite movies. Absolutely beautiful story, be beautiful portrayal of um, first love. And yeah, it's about these two people. They meet in Italy. Um, and... Yeah, I thought the novel was great and I was worried about the adaptation because, you know, when you when you love a book so much, you worry they're going to, like, mess it up on the screen. But I uh, I absolutely love the movie. I've seen it in the theater and it was, it was a stunning movie, beautifully shot, um, but the emotions portrayed um, absolutely makes your hair stand up on your arms. Um, it's about this, yeah, as I said, about this couple they meet. Um, and yeah, they kind of slowly fall in, in love and get into this relationship. And it's all the heartache that comes with the first love and the doubt and um, feelings you feel when you first fall in love with someone um, especially when you're not necessarily not breaking certain social rules but yeah you're not really falling in love with the person that society might most agree on you should fall in love with and yeah i think it's a as i said a beautiful beautiful portrayal of uh, such a relationship and just love in general. It just really made me remember like, first love and how I felt when I will, was like younger and I used to have a crush on someone or like really feel deeply for someone. And yeah, highly, highly encourage you. It's uh, directed by Luca Guadagnino. And yeah, I think the screenplay won the Oscar for it. The name of the man who wrote the screenplay escapes me right now, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful adapted screenplay, very faithful to the novel. Uh, and the other book on movie I've mentioned before and I made a review, it's, I think it's my third video on this channel, I made a book review, a uh, movie review, because after I came out from the movie theater, I was absolutely like, I was crying, it was so sad. It's a movie that I wouldn't necessarily watch several times because once you know the plot and what happens, it's not maybe as impactful. But it's still like you can catch on dialogues and you get more from the story, I guess, um, if you rewatch it. But yeah, it's uh, this movie is Manchester by the Sea. Um, with Casey Affleck won the Oscar for the portrayal of uh, his character and it's yeah it's an I can't tell you well, all I can tell you about this movie is that you know this uh, guy who's a janitor his brother passes away suddenly and he's kind of like uh, put in charge or asked to, to take care of his uh, nephew because his brother asks in his will uh, for him to be his guardian and he doesn't really feel 
uh, Casey Affleck, the, this character doesn't really feel like that's right. Like he, he just really doesn't. He rejects the idea that he should be in charge of the kid, who's really a teenager. And he's in a band and stuff like that. I don't want to give too much away, but yeah, uh, you'll find out if you see the movie why more than just like oh I don't take care of a kid who's not mine. That's not the point and like why he really feels like he's not entitled to take care of someone and it's really really like heartbreaking just thinking about that and there's a police um, a scene in the police station i was like oh my god just breaking watching it it, it just makes me cry just thinking about that um yeah absolutely heartbreaking movie i'm going to repeat this word for the entire of this video um now another book adapt uh, another movie adapted after a book uh snowfall snow falling on cedars uh this was written by david cutterson i've come i'm not really sure who directed this because i've seen it probably when i was maybe 10 or something uh if not younger uh, but why i still remember this story is because I've, I've, uh, this is with the main character is uh, played by Ethan Hawke, one of my favorite actors, and I'm gonna mention him in other movies on from this list. But yeah, it's about um, the story is about this man who comes back to his hometown, I believe, and this is after the events of Pearl Harbor, and it's about the Americans and the Japanese and the frictions between them but it's mainly about I mean not necessarily mainly but it's about this love story that took place many years ago before those events um, and it's this guy as I said played by Ethan Hawke who's a journalist and he comes home he attends a trial of the men of the husband of the woman he was in love with when he was much younger and they're these they, they're Japanese and him the journalist is an American and the novel is absolutely beautiful um, someone told me about it when I was uh, working many years ago so I was working in a restaurant and I saw uh, this lady reading the novel and I was like oh I've seen the movie I really love it and she was like oh the movie doesn't even touch it the novel is st stunning and I was like oh yeah okay you know when I people say that it's like I always you know it's really difficult to make a good good movie and I, I i really love this movie so i i was a bit reticent but um she struck me as a nice person so i checked out the, the book because it's been several years since i've seen the movie so yeah absolutely wonderful uh, the language i still remember like the strawberry fields are kind of in uh, on this island that the, the action takes place um the the cedar obviously snow falling on cedars and yeah another heartbreaking <laughs> i mean not necessarily heartbreaking this i wouldn't say this is heartbreaking um compared to the other ones um this is more about the human like the human heart um and being truthful you know um i remember um but yeah it's about making choices and if you even if you loved someone if they kind of like betrayed you in a way or you feel betrayed because they made certain choices um it was it was really wonderful to watch them put put into scene this uh, because i think the, the whole movie basically is about this trial that takes place and what happened we need to find out if this man this japanese man convicted for murder uh, for the murder of an American fisherman, he did what he did, and we see it through the eyes of this character who's basically like his rival, but not really because he was involved or in love with the prisoner's wife many years ago, and they haven't even met, I think, uh, the two men. And so it's a really interesting way of seeing how people react um, and how how just they act according to their feelings and yeah it's a <coughs> really beautiful movie absolutely stunningly shot um but yeah the 
post to novel and the, the movie I loved. I guess I would have to see the movie now um, because it's been many years since I've seen it. So comparing it to the novel because yeah, I was much younger when I seen the movie. Um, <clears throat> a really beautiful love story that has time travel. Uh, it's uh, somewhere in time. It's with Christopher Reeve and Jane Seymour. I think it's before the 1990s. This movie, I think. Um, I think so. Um, absolutely beautiful stories about this playwright who like he has this, this party to celebrating the release of a movie or something like that and there's this old woman who comes to him and tells him come back to me <laughs> and he just looks at her he doesn't recognize her he doesn't know who she is she's like 90 years old looking and yeah the story kind of goes from there because um, this playwright played by Christopher Reeve who's like kind of famous for Superman and stuff like that but for me this is the movie again um, just because it's more close to my heart the kind of story I like and yeah he, he walks into the, this hotel room and uh, hotel room into this hotel and there's like a gallery celebrating people from the area or who've been at the hotel and then he sees this poor beautiful gorgeous portrait of a woman um, and he finds out she was she, there's no name and he asks one of the men a really old man he's like 90 i think his name is arthur um, but yeah kind of like the helper or like in charge manager of the hotel um i think like something like that and he asks him who's that person and he tells him it's a an actress you know very famous actress um, Alice McKenna or something like that um, and he asked her like what what year and it's like 1922 or something like that <laughs> and he kind of like he's stunned and he manages to kind of sort of get back in time and meet her so I don't, I don't want to tell you more than that because it's I would, I've already told you enough um, I don't want to spoil it for you but it's a beautiful love story for me, t movies with time travel, uh, time travel, I always have trouble with them a bit because for me, I'm going to mention another movie, The Butterfly Effect. It's like you, if you go back in time, the smallest thing you change is going to affect the present, you know, the future. And this movie is like a massive change, like, you know. But anyway, so talking about The Butterfly Effect with Ashton Catcher. Another amazing movie. Uh, you've probably heard of it, um, but uh, yeah, I've seen it. For, I can't even remember uh, many, many years ago. But it's basically about this guy who kind of has this ability to go back in time. He like uh, has this bunch of notes, uh, like journals, and he he discovers that he can change things. I think or go back in time. And then I think something happens to someone he loves um, and he tries to change it and the more like when he goes back when he returns afterwards um, the changes he's made have tremendous effect on other characters like some of the characters who he wanted to bring back or, or change their life make it better they he does that but then other characters are affected by it in a bad in a negative way so he always he tries to re go back and rechange and until everything's right for him what he feels right but yeah it's just things don't really work out like that uh, i think so i think this movie had like three endings but the one picked i think was the most suitable and uh, if you've seen it you know what i'm talking about but yeah another beautiful but heartbreaking story really um so i've talked about this one um call me my name okay so what else um a, a movie that I've, I've seen recently but it's really old like from 1992 or 93 something like that it's with ethan hawke and leonardo dicaprio and juliet lewis so it's um what's eating gilbert grape 
it's about this um, teenager. I think he's not even like an adult. Maybe he might be, but he's like on the border, like maybe might be 18, 19. And he's, um, yeah, called Gilbert Grape. And he's in charge of kind of, I mean, he's in charge. He's kind of all the responsibility falls on him to take care of uh, the family because his mother is um, just have, she kind of fall uh, fell into a depression after her husband died um, let's put it that way and um, yeah she's kind of like um, obese she's like really the heaviest person people in that area have seen um, and it's like a peculiar thing or like something to look at and you know and so this this um, uh, uh, Gilbert he has to take care of the family basically because he's the oldest child in the family and since his mother doesn't go out from the house he is just he has to take care of his uh, younger brother who's uh, played by uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and he's a kid with um, special needs I'm not sure what um kind of like was the technical term for his illness but he's basically his everyone's waiting for him to turn 18. Um, doctor said he was going to die much sooner but they give him like they give him as sometimes happens you know they say oh he's not going to survive longer than this but he has and he's like kind of really naughty but he's basically like he's almost 18 but he's kind of in the he looks like 12 and he's kind of like the mind of a, you know not even 12 he, he can't take care of himself like there's a scene actually um when gilbert he usually bathes him and takes care of him and there's this scene where um he he kind of decides oh you can you can do this on your own and it, it turns out he can't really and i don't want to spoil what happens but yeah it's just really like shocking um so it's a beautiful, beautiful story. Um, it's all these people in this town. It's really kind of not the most appealing town to live in. Uh, but and the most exciting thing, they ex wait for the caravans to come into town. And one of the characters who comes is uh, played by Juliette Lewis, who's this girl who travels and has seen a lot of the world and kind of brings a bit more of a, an uplifting feel to, to you know to this to Gilbert's life basically because he's not really happy with where he like the situation he's stuck in but he he tries his best to take care of the family and about his brother Arnie and um yeah um, he I don't want to spoil it for you and I don't want to say what like main thing that happened you just have to see it but and I, beautiful portrayal of like family who's going through a really difficult situation and everyone's coping in different ways that there's like two or three sis two sisters or three sisters different ages and obviously each one of them have different responsibilities or like things they do um but yeah it was a really beautiful story absolutely lovely lovely story um Um, yeah, highly, highly encourage you to see that if you haven't seen it, like, I, I can't believe it took me this long. Uh, if I've seen it, I don't really remember, I must have been really young, I don't think I've seen it, um, because I was probably like three when this movie came out. So, yeah, um, I'm going to stop the video because I can only record like 25 minutes, <laughs> so I just restarted. Hi again. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, the, the movie I was talking about was What's Eating Gilbert Grape, which is one of my favorite movies. I'll, I'll touch on another movie that I've seen um, with Johnny Depp, which is really shocking. But the thing would happen, I knew what was most like the plot, what was going to happen really, like the ending, because I was watching interviews um, and uh, I... I didn't, I hadn't seen the movie and I was just, I didn't have the movie, so I watched the interviews and it was the making of it, there was a, there's a video on YouTube and 
I knew what was, what was going out, what was going to happen. So th this is basically um, a movie based on a Stephen King short story, I think, or uh, it's like a novella actually. So it's like I think it has like 108 pages or so, and um, Secret Window. Uh, so yeah, the story is Secret Garden, Secret Window. And it's about this uh, guy who lives on you know, a remote place, in a remote cabin kind of house, slash house. And he's like a writer. And uh, one day he's dealing, he's going through a divorce. And uh, one one day someone knocks on his door and accuses him of plagiarism. Basically, he tells him, "You stole my story, Mister. So you have to like you know." Um, and he's like, no, I did not steal your story. I don't even know who you are. Uh, get the heck. You know, he has, the character has this dog. Um, oh yeah, his name is uh, Ray Morty, I believe. Uh, the main character's name. Me and, me and names, I'm absolutely terrible. Um, and yeah, he has this blind dog, um, stuff like that. And yeah, it's a really interesting, um, like a thriller because you have this character who's like being accused, like a writer being accused of plagiarism is the worst thing that could happen for, for someone. And especially when someone's going through a really difficult time in their life, like a divorce. Um, it's just, it made for a really compelling read, uh, watch. And as I was saying, I haven't read the book, but um, I knew what was going to happen after because I've watched the interviews and then I managed to uh, find and see the movie um, and I knew what was going to happen and still I was entranced, I was like captured by what was going on because I, I, I was curious to see how they played it on the screen and how, how they put it together and yeah to be the shocking ending um, but um, yeah, it's really interesting. I was, as I said, like I can only imagine how people are gonna react if they know nothing about it and they just go and see it. Because uh, I was still struck by the ending, knowing it, and yeah, it was really something. It's really interesting uh, movie. So, secret window. Um, let's talk about. I've really started like random. I had like lists and now it's all over the place. Um, I'm trying to tick them off just so I don't read and talk about them again um, in the same video. <laughs> so uh, let's, I'm going to talk about two movies that um, are adapted after books by the same author, Nicholas Sparks. And you've probably heard of them. They're like classic, classic, classics. <laughs> and these are The Notebook and A Walk to Remember. So we have The Notebook. If you don't know The Notebook, you're like, where have you been? I mean, maybe you're younger than me and you just haven't seen it. Um, as I said, these are older movies. <laughs> and so The Notebook is the story about um, uh, it's played by uh, Rachel Adams and Ryan Gosling and it's basically this, these two people they meet and they fall in love or they're like she's kind of from a rich family and he's from you know a bit more <laughs> not so uh, wealthy family and he's like you know I think his mother her mother even calls him he, you know he's, uh, she says oh he's a nice boy he, but he's trash 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 she just really yells uh, at her daughter. So yeah, it's basically about these two who meet and fall in love, but the family don't, don't, don't really agree and they're kind of separated over time. Um, but um, why I really, I still remember this, is like I, I, I've seen the movie years ago and then I read no, the the novel, which is a really short novel, so oh, a bit over 100 pages, I think. Um, has like 50,000 something words and I remember reading it and I, I knew, I've seen the movie, I already knew the ending and when I reached, I was like reading the last few like paragraphs of lines and I was like still, like I felt like crying, I was like so, oh, it was so heartbreaking but like it's a really beautiful story, it's not like heartbreaking like ache I mean it makes you ache but it's like really it's a good love story it's 
it's kind of like love conquers all and all that. It's a really, I, guys and girls will cry this movie. I mean, yeah. And then A Walk to Remember, which is with Mandy Moore and, um, oh my God, I forgot his name. What's his name? Uh, Shane West. <laughs> um, so we have this story about uh, high school love, basically. Um, you have, again, two people that don't really, like, get along at the beginning because they're in the same high school. He's, like, the cool guy and, you know, all these um, fancy acting acts he pulls. And he does something and then he's, like, kind of punished for it. And um, she's this girl who... Um, she's really conscious. She's very good she does everything right in school and she's really like a daughter, model daughter um, and I, I believe she's the daughter of the priest I think and yeah and it's just basically got kind of put together um, she has to tutor him and but he kind of like pretends like there's a one scene where he pretends he doesn't know her and she kind of obviously gets upset um, but yeah, this is just, that's the, I'm not really selling this movie, am I? It's, it's a really um, heartbreaking movie because it's about, um, there's, there's a line in the movie where she, she says, she talks about uh, faith, I think, and believing, and she says it's like the wind, you can't see it, but you can feel it, and it, I think it ends in the same way with, um, the character played by Shane Waste, uh, Landon, I think it's his name, and he he says that about love. You know, you can't really, you can't see it, but you can feel it. And if, even after years, things are still gonna be remembered. You can't if things happen, life happens. You know, um, sometimes you lose people, sometimes you you know they move on or whatever happens, but. Yeah, because I don't want to spoil anything, <laughs> so I'm not going to, you know, but yeah, it's just love is love. So it was a really beautiful portrayal of young love that it's really lasting over time. Um, um, a movie I've seen recently well, a couple of weeks ago, uh, titled The Vanishing of Sydney Hall. It's with um, Logan Lerman, Lerman, Logan Lerman and Elle Fanning. They've, um, and there's the, uh, another guy who was the brother in uh, Manchester by the Sea. Uh, I love that actor, but I always forget his name. Um, yeah, he's the brother of Casey Affleck's character in Manchester by the Sea, and he has a role rather significant role in uh, this Logan Lerman, um, this Log uh, Vanishing of Sydney Hall movie. Uh, and this is, I think it was filmed in like three weeks. I don't think it was three months, I think three weeks, which is like astonishing, um, knowing the final result, absolutely beautiful, um, beautiful movie. Um, and the way they've edited and put it all together because we have this character, um, Sydney Hall, Who's like really like young, um, young author who becomes like a famous American writer, like the 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 right the author of a generation, and we see him in like three stages when he's like eighteen or like seventeen, twenty four and thirty ish thirty, and yeah we we get to go along on the ride and see how he's doing all these different stages in his life and what happens and um, this is really heart-wrenching again heart-wrenching movie I was like when you think nothing worse could happen it's like that happens and yeah it's, um, so he he's like we get to see him when he's young and he kind of he wants to write a novel that's meaningful you know here I am, a writer who wants to write something meaningful. So obviously I <laughs> related very well to that uh, story and maybe that's why I love it so much. Uh, but yeah, he, he, he tells his teacher, 
um, he wants to write not not romance novel, not necessarily that's something wrong, but I mean he, his perspective there is like romance novel. He wants to write something that's going to change the world, you know, and um, his teacher kind of tries to point him in the direction, and he's like he starts writing this book and he's exchanging um, the stuff he writes with the teacher he to get some feedback, and yeah, I, I don't want to spoil it for you, so. Yeah, uh, then we see we get to see the relationship between him and uh, uh, Elle Fanning's character, who's like really not anxious, maybe. She's just very like keeps to herself in a way, um, this girl. And yeah, she like the way they meet and interact is really interesting. Um, and then you have this detective because basically it's. Uh, the vanishing of Sydney Hall. You have this character, this author, famous author, who's n nobody has heard of him in like f six or five or six years. And there's this uh, character who's looking for him. He's like a detective. Um, he's looking for him, and there's like burnings of um, of the taking place in libraries ac across uh, the state, uh, across different states, I think. And he, yeah, he's trying to find him, find Sydney Hall, and it's it's really it's, a bit, it's a, an interesting ride. I was really, it really all came together. Uh, I was really sad, but the way they brought it together, it was there were some really funny moments, but there are few because so many horrible things happened to this character and the other characters in the in the story. So it's really kind of painful, at, very, very painful at most of the time. And there's few, there's some funny moments, but they're, because of the pain, so much pain in the story, you kind of, some people I think didn't notice them as much, but they, they are there, they're really funny. But um, especially the scene with the detective uh, towards the last maybe 20 minutes of the movie. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend this because I don't think many people have heard of, it, of this and it's a really beautiful story because, you know, you have a movie about a writer, about books <laughs> and about stories, about love and yeah, it's really, really be wonderful. Um, let's talk about some old, uh, some movies about like history, the combined history. We have two of my favorite movies. The Last of the Mohicans with Daniel Day-Lewis, which I was like so in love with him when I saw this movie. It's like amazing story because you have all this history and love uh, stories coming together. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really have to say too much about this because you've probably seen it. Um, I mean, <laughs> there's actors and there's Daniel Day-Lewis, I guess, as Leonardo DiCaprio was saying in one of his interviews. So yeah, you can definitely see this uh, in, in the movie. Um, but um, that's not, um, maybe I, you get me wrong here by me saying that. All the cast, you have, um, oh my god, what's her name? She's Madeline Stowe, she's stunning, like the performance she gives. And all the cast, they're all absolutely wonderful actors each performance is absolutely magnificent um, yeah it's, you just have to see this I, I've seen it many years ago and I, I, but I still remember like the endings uh, the endings the ending what happens to some of the characters but I can't remember the plot exactly so yeah I'm just not gonna I could check IMDb, but you could do that yourself, I guess. Um, and it's a really well-known movie, so yeah. And then we have Geronimo, an American legend, with uh, Jason Patrick and Wes, Wes Study, which Wes Study, he was in The Last of the Mohicans, I believe. Um, and Geronimo was, again, a beautiful portrayal of uh, Native Americans and I felt it was truthful I mean I don't really know I wasn't there to witness those events but the way they showed it the way they've put it on screen it was I felt it was just and it made 
it was right um, to remember these people and Jason Patrick oh my god he's oh my god he was he has such a deep voice such a wonderful voice I could listen to him talking uh, it's a really wonderful voice um, really um, it's lots of people have nice voices but there's like nice voices and then there's nice voices like that just put chills on you and that's like Jason Patrick Johnny Depp really wonderful voices um, that when you hear them you instantly know you have something to deal with someone who is really memorable and so yeah you get to see these two characters uh, these two actors and their characters interacting with each other Jason Patrick plays this um, I think sergeant or, or general something like that um, in the army and he's in, he's put in charge to bring well, um, Geronimo because he's murdered all these people and all that but I mean you get to see uh, it was really well portrayed like the way it was the story was I can't I don't know who directed it but the way they put it on screen was really faithful I think um, and respectful um, and yeah it's a really beautiful friendship because basically you get these characters that kind of they're enemies really you know they're American one American and um, American native um, Apache um, so they're at opposite sides but they, they are really two um, similar hearts hearts really you know they, they understand um, and obviously the events that happened are really unjust uh, um, it's, it really shows you like sometimes you think oh someone killed and some other well what, what was he entitled to do those things why did he you know when your people are absolutely massacred what do you do and it was there's a, a scene on the mountain towards again I think like the last few minutes of the movie absolutely had me in tears it was like he was um, Geronimo was talking about um, losing his wife and how um, but I, I can't remember the exact the words he said but I was just like I was crying like it was such a beautifully shot scene and it was so intense it was I, yeah you just have if you watch a movie about if you're curious about that history this is one of the best movies to watch because I believe it's a really truthful to history to what actually happened and it helps you understand a lot um, let's see again another movie about history but also love because I love love stories <laughs> uh, it's called mountain and the why uh, the reason why I picked this um, put it on the list here um, it's uh, it's again it's uh, adapted after a novel written by Charles Frazier if I'm pronouncing the name wrong I'm sorry um, but I think I've read I think I've seen the movie and then I've read the novel yeah I think so I was in high school I still remember going to the library and picking the book I think the book I, I took had the movie called the, the characters uh, the, the actors who played so we had like uh, Nicole Kidman, Jude Law, Rene Zellweger and it's, if I remember correctly, if I'm not wrong um, it's about the civil war and the slavery and the, the, I mean you don't really get to see the slavery and stuff like that in the movie but it's about um, uh, the north and south and losing the war and, and it's about this character who is a deserter basically and I think I think he is and he basically runs away and he, he wants to return back to his love who's played by Nicole Kidman I think he asks her to marry him or something but then the war happens so he, he has to go and yeah he it's all this journey basically it's about yeah the journey of him coming back to her and the movie was shot in Romania uh, I think most of it was, if not all of it, was shot in the mountains of Romania um, I think near the area of Brasov, which is one of the most beautiful areas in my country and 
absolutely stunning cinematography. Um, I still remember Renée Zellweger saying, um, I mean, her character when she says about the war, which is really true about all wars, you know. Um, so this this line, um, something about uh, they complain about uh, the weather that it's rain, there's a, something like that, and then but they made a uh, oh yeah, there's uh, this cloud uh, about above the land and you know it's raining and all this shit storm or whatever but they made it the cloud and now they're they're complaining about it and yeah i've totally butchered those lines but yeah i think she says it in the trailer so if you watch the trailer you know exactly what i mean if you haven't seen the film already because this is pretty well known um but yeah uh, a really tender story it's about yeah it's Really, I love stories which combine the war with the love story because you get to learn about history, you get to learn about the human heart, and all these these sort of things. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful film, and you get to see stunning, stunning landscapes from uh, Romania. Absolutely gorgeous because I think they picked the location because it was um, very similar to how uh, that part of America. The one that they try to portray in the story looked in, in those times. Yeah, there, we still have those forests, and um, it was and it was probably cheaper to shoot shoot uh, in our country. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so yeah. Another movie I would like to talk to you about, which I've seen again. I've seen many years ago, but I still remember. I don't remember the plot, but um, it's uh, it's after again after a novel by Stephen King. Um, I actually I think it's a short story. Um, it's called Heart Hearts in Atlantis. I'm just checking this Atlantis on IMDb if I can give you a bit more about it. Um, but yeah, it's with uh, Anthony Hopkins and Anton Yelchin, who sadly passed away a few years ago. A wonderful actor. I think he was 12 when he shot this film. Um, so yeah, it says Hearts in Atlantis is a drama based on Stephen King's bestseller of the same name. It is the story of a mysterious man played by Anthony Hopkins who enlists the aid of a brilliant young boy, Anton Yelchin. To save his life, the friend, this friendship with a mysterious stranger forever, forever changes the way he sees the world. And I think the story starts with um, the character of Anton Yelchin returning to his hometown, and um, I think I don't know if he returned because his mother passed away, or because I know there's a funeral in the film, but I can't remember if this was at the beginning or he finds out. Towards the, oh yeah, I think he later on finds out what happened with a very important character in the in his life, uh, with whom he he lost touch, but he remembers how yeah this old piece like forty now he comes back and he remembers the events from that summer when he was only like a really young boy, probably not even twelve, and this stranger moved into his house, his mother's house. And he kind of he didn't have a father figure, and he really connects with this man and some of the things he can do, and it's really, um, really nice film to watch uh, because you, you know you have this kid who's absolutely his performance is, is wonderful. Um, Anton Yelchin was a terrible loss when he passed away. Loved him in Old Thomas. There was another movie he, he did, uh, Lisbon, I think. I don't know if it was titled like that. But he was really not a blockbuster, but his, yeah, I just, I liked him. It was really a sad movie, that one, though. But I, I liked him. But this movie, Hearts in Atlantis, absolutely wonderful. Um, re this, uh, Another movie about love, but it's really young love, and is much more than that. Many, many strange things happen. You know, it's a stray. It's a Stephen King 
movie uh, story, you know, it's, a, it's adapted out of his story, so of course strange things are going to happen. Um, let's see. Uh, the Legends of the Fall. Did I mention this? I don't think I have. I should I should have really put it on like movies with histories, movies, uh, this is all over the place. So we have leg the Legends of the of the Fall. When I was talking about Candy, that was the movie that really made me love, absolutely love Heath Ledger. This is the movie, the before um, the Legends of the Fall, uh, on after which I um, I absolutely fell in love with uh, Brad Pitt when I was so young. But who cares? Um, so th this movie, if you haven't heard of it or seen it, or it's basically about again <laughs> you have the war and. Um, massive love stories and it's about the prohibition um, if you don't know what the prohibition is it was a time in his American history when um, alcohol was prohibited pro prohibited and um, yeah but this movie spans among many years so you get the characters you get to see these characters among many years and how they grow up and and it's basically the center is uh, this, this father who holds the family together he has three sons and then the war breaks and I think the youngest one even wants to enroll and he doesn't agree but basically they go to war I think all three of them go to war or two of them uh, Tristan um, who's play, played by Brad Pitt he's like the middle brother I think and there's this woman like uh, the younger brother brings just before the war, I think, yeah, he, um, obviously, uh, he brings because he falls in love with her and he wants to marry her. And I, I can't remember if they actually get married, but I know he proposes to her and they're like engaged and he brings her to live there with them. And if all of them, they're like in love with her, which is a beautiful lady played by Julia Ormond, stunning performance. And then they go to war, something really bad happens, obviously, there is a the war and um, it was uh, the ending of this oh my god I don't remember watching I was like so shocked and so saddened and absolutely ter terrible but it, it's a again beautiful story that's why I love this movie but and it was absolutely beautifully shot but yeah heartbreaking story but it's the one I still remember. I like Brad Pitt has made so many movies. Oh my God, I forgot about Meet Joe, Joe Black. He's in this movie, if you haven't seen it, an absolutely beautiful movie. Um, he's basically playing Death, who's taken over this body, this uh, young man's body. Um, and yeah, beautiful movie. These two are like my favorite movies, not just Brad Pitt movies, but movies ever. Um, I can't remember the name of the woman who plays with him in Meet Joe Black, but it's again with Anthony Hopkins, he plays the father, and yeah, same as in in uh, uh, The Legends of the Fall. But yeah, Meet Joe Black, there's no like, war going on, it's just a love story, and it's this obviously peculiar story because you have death taking over this man's body, and there's before that happens, these two people um, they meet in a cof in a coffee place and they kind of like have a conversation and they kind of like you can get the sense that they've fallen in love, but she she's in a, in a relationship and um, I think she's a medical student or something and he's like a, trying to make a life and he talks all about you know what's wrong with taking care of a woman he wants to have a family and that he's really endearing character and she really falls for him kind of you know because she tells him like oh you're gonna have a hard time finding a woman like that who wants to have a you know that kind of life but just be like that but um yeah and then something happens to him and death takes over him and it, that's a massive spoiler i'm sorry but yeah it's Oh, it's a really beautiful, um, it's something else, seeing how, thinking how death would react to falling in love and how, um, 
uh, experimenting that thing for skis and like you have basically have this beautiful man with someone who's never experienced these things before like and it was really a really beautiful beautiful movie um let's see what else i've got i've got the mini series oh, i've got the movie a beautiful mind which was with, with uh, russell crowe and jennifer connelly and another absolutely stunning movie it's about this uh, scientist um, and the relationship he has with his wife and the thing he goes through and I, I, I'm not going to say anymore because you just have to see this. One thing I do remember about this movie, among the many wonderful things, is that there's a scene in there about the main character is kind of like te teaching one of his friends, his good friends, how to like um, attract ladies. And like if you're attracted to someone and you go and there's like three of them, you don't go and talk to the one you're most interested in because she's going to ignore you. That's what people do, unfortunately, sometimes. They think they're too good or they're just like, you know, try to pull a face and pretend they're not interested. And if you go for someone, not necessarily like, don't fool them, but like tell someone else, one of the other people that you make a compliment on them and make the other person think you you like the other person they're gonna get more interested in you um, you have to see it you'll get it much better than what i'm saying right now you know um but uh, yeah it was really funny seeing that one but the movie itself is really a f variety of emotions i've seen it many years ago again and it has to do with mental illness um brilliant mind beautiful mind a beautiful heart and yeah absolutely worth checking out if you haven't already um we have let's talk about um some of the series we have sex education which is with asa butterfly and uh, what's her name gillian anderson i think she played in Hannibal and X-Files. Um, so you have this TV series about this teenage boy who becomes like a, she, she, he, he helps his high school colleagues with, um, yeah, he basically listens to them and gives them advice because his mother is a sex therapist. So he kind of like, he's convinced by this girl she, that she, he should help others for money obviously because <laughs> they need money but it's really like so funny this movie and it deals with um, lots of things it has to do with abortion it has to do with uh, you know discovering these things uh, when you're so young and how to deal with them like um, gender issues and sexuality and all these things brilliant brilliant tv series um must really really good checking out um, and then we have, um, we have another, this is a mini series, it's in uh, six, it has six episodes, it's Comrade, Comrade Detective, uh, it's a really strange film, but it's about the communist area in my country, Romania, and why I say strange, it, it, it took me a while to get adjusted to like the first two episodes, um, but once I got used to it, the style of the movie, of the TV series, it, I went along for the ride. It was really, I thought it was well done. Obviously, it was it's made by Amazon, I think. So it was really a lot of, you know, things that <laughs> over the top, but not, not really over the top. It's just really a bit more up. Everything is more up and exaggerated. Um, so it's uh, about... Uh, as far as I remember, it's about these two detectives and they're like in the communist time in Romania and they're trying to, you know, fight corruption and all that. But what's really um, like peculiar about this is that um, 
the two, the two main characters, one of them actually is one of my favorite authors, Romanian authors, um, or authors in general. He wrote Romantic Porn, <laughs> that's how it's called the title. It's a really, really beautiful novel. Um, and uh, yeah, his name is Florin Piercy Jr. And he's yeah the son of one of the greatest movie star, uh, movie Romanian movie stars. Um, but he's like he's in his own right. He's a beautiful actor. I can't remember the other guy because I'm just terrible with names. But um, yeah, he they they uh, what I didn't like at the beginning was that you get these actors, really wonderful actors, and you don't hear their voices. You see them acting and all that, but they're dubbed. They're like. Um, Jason, Jason Tatum, and um, oh my God, what's his other name? Uh, what's the other guy's name who played in uh, Five Hundred Days of Summer? Another wonderful movie. Um, let me look. Um, Days of Summer. Don't remember his name. Um, he looks like Heath Ledger. <laughs> um, J uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. So yeah, it's uh, they dub the voices so you get you hear them their voices but the characters and the appearances of these Romanian actors so it's really strange because I, I know how they sound at least Florian Piercy Jr. and um, Junior <laughs> and it was really strange to watch that it was really fun to see so you want to learn about communist Maria um, communist Maria communism time my country um, and also be like really entertained this is a really good series to watch, absolutely stunningly shot. It was, yeah, really, really good. Um, what else? So I have The Lake House because I've recently seen John Wick. Not that these two stories have anything to do with each other, other than they have the main character uh, played by uh, Ken, Ken Reeves. Um, the, the Lake House is, yeah, the main character is played by Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock. And this is, again, a story about time travel, kind of. Because you have this, um, this guy who lives in a house. And, yeah, somehow they manage to, to, he manages to communicate with someone else, Sandra, played by Sandra Bullock, through the letterbox. So, basically, he receives letters. So, um, and she... She, she as well, and they fall in love through these letters, but they're like two years apart. So yeah, I think one is in, lives in, he lives in 2006 and she's in 2008 or something like that. So it was really, again, time travel, you know, you have to, you know, have to put that suspension of disbelief. But yeah, it was really beautiful, beautiful love story. Yeah. I like it. I love it a lot. Uh, the chemistry is absolutely stunning. I was actually watching a scene because apparently they finally said that they both had a crush on each other. And um, I was watching that scene. There's a scene in the lake house where the, her character, she talks about um, meeting someone and it's not the right time. And then you think things could have happened, but they don't. And then you meet them later. and. But you think, what if too much time has passed? It was really funny and sad at the same time because these people, they care about each other. The actors, I mean, actually, you know, actually, the actors. And, I mean, I don't like to intrude into life, so it has not really my business. But uh, just that peculiarity, like they acted in this story about two people who are in love, but they don't really say to each other. I mean, they do, actually. They do say to each other in the film, but they can't really be together uh, for yeah it's just really yeah it was very strange you know, like what would you do what would that happen uh yeah it was a really beautiful story <laughs> i have to check it out <laughs> i'm selling all these movie, uh, movies am i not like terrible 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 um yes we have another classic Dead Poets Society with Robin Williams and Ethan Hawke and that's just a movie of a generation. Uh, I, I remember Chuck Palahniuk talking about having, not having too many movies for men, like there's uh, as a like group or as a, you know, you, you, like you have sex in the cities with women and other things, but for men there weren't many 
genre defining mo movies um, that could teach people guys how to act or you know something like that to to that effect and it was he was saying that you have dead boys society and fight club <laughs> and i really like the dead boys society is about poetry and you know all these wonderful things the fight club is about you know fighting and <laughs> don't talk about fight club <laughs> anyway so yeah i wanted to remember that that movie because it's yeah, again, you have Ethan Hawke in it, and you have, oh, I don't know the name, the guy's name, but he was in Dr. House, really beautiful actor, and a beautiful voice, and very pleasing to look at, like, really kind face looking, and, yeah, the character he plays is are really, always really good, and funny, and, yeah, so, let's see. Uh, since I talked about Keanu Reeves, I want to talk about the movies that he, I really, one of his young, um, earliest movies, that the one I remember for, remember him for, there's many, obviously, Matrix, so well known, but the one I remember him for, I think, I don't know if it was, maybe it was his first, the first movie I've seen with him, it was um, a, walk, a Walk in the Clouds, and it's a romance story, um, this guy he returns from the war and he's on the bus, he meets this woman and she, she like, there's a, an altercation on the bus and they're both like, I think someone makes, uh, says something towards her and the character of Keanu Reeves takes her defense and like, you know, you shouldn't talk like that to a lady or something, I can't remember, I haven't seen it in ages, but basically they're thrown out of the bus and they're just there <laughs> in the middle of the road and she's like she's also scared because she doesn't really want to go home because she's afraid her father is going to kill her because she is un unmarried and waiting a child um yeah so he the character of keanu reeves offers to to marry her for a day and then he, he proposes he'll go with her present him as the guy you know who left her pregnant and then he'll go away just so she doesn't fall for a fool or something in front of her father and he doesn't kill her or whatever it's a really beautiful love story because um yeah it's just i don't know it's not like a blockbuster but i really loved it um this is shot in like this place with a vineyard and this whole it's about tradition and um heritage and yeah, I just really, I think he, they both look really beautiful, but obviously Keanu Reeves, I'm, you know, <laughs> he looks beautiful in that film. And it's just, I think it's one of the most beautiful kisses on screen in that film. Absolutely wonderful. Um, but yeah, but the story is just, well, lov lovely. Um, let's see, I've got, I know one, there's a series I want to talk about. Um, oh, I'll talk about this and then I'll talk about that on the series. So, uh, there's a movie Back Roads, which I wouldn't say necessarily I would watch it again. It's like, oh my God, this that kind of movie. But he's, uh, this movie is about abuse. And I saw the portrayal, while the main character, he's much older than I think the character should have been, that made it even more affecting because he plays this a guy who's left in charge like the father was killed by uh, the mother and she's in prison now and he's in charge of taking care of the three girls three sisters and to see like the actor who played him is alex pettifer Petty? yeah alex pettifer Petifer. um and he oh my god he, um, and the mother is played by juliet lewis and uh, this character played uh, by the girl who was in um, in House, Doctor House, and the this TV series about I can't remember right now what it was called, but yeah, um, Jennifer something I think is her name. Um, I I thought Alex he did like an amazing. I'll call him Alex just because I can't I don't know his family name. I've written it down, but I, I'm not sure uh, how I say it. Petty fine. Anyway, this this story, Back Roads, this movie is about abuse and uh, sexual abuse, domestic abuse, um, 
there's adultery taking place um, but it's really what struck me is this portrayal like Alex portrayed this character so well uh, because he looks he's like 30 something you know he looks he's really well built um, he, he's really well well built um, but I, I don't know if, if I'm not sure if it's after a book or not but the way he portrays it it makes you feel like that child in him like uh, the people oh my god it's like the story uh, again i don't want to give too much away i already said it's a story about abuse but i was shocked um because as i said you see this looking adult although he's not i mean he's supposed to be an adult but still kind of like Gilbert Grape, you know, when Johnny Depp and Gilbert Grape, he was supposed to be probably like the older brother. And it's just seeing him the way he is and how it ends up, uh, it was uh, terrible, absolutely terrible. It really makes you think about what goes on in a family and how kids are really affected by things their parents do and yeah, it was really sad. It was really, abs it was, yeah, just really, really sad. Um, I'm going to stop because it's almost 25 minutes. Ugh, I can't believe I've been talking for this long. So now I've got, got, doo -doo -doo -doo, I've got one f film story that it's really a three movies because it's a, yeah, trilogy. Um, I think I've talked all about the other books before, um, about, the, about those stories before I talk about this one. Uh, the ones I've got, oh, I'll talk about this one and then I'll talk for the last, and this will be done. I'll talk about the, the before trilogy. If you have heard of it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, it's a treat. But let's first, I'm, I'm first going to talk about uh, this. It's a movie with Mark Ruffalo and Matt Boomer. Absolutely beautiful actors. And I'm not just talking about physically, like their performances in ev every movie I see, it says Matt Boomer or Ma Mark Ruffalo. I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> and this, um, I think Matt Boomer probably got the Oscar for this. I'm not sure, but he probably did. I can't remember, but it's called, uh, the, the movie is titled The Normal Heart. It's a movie I always forget the name for, absolutely, I don't know why, I always think heart or something, I always forget The Normal Heart, but I, never, I can never forget the story. Um, it's about the HIV epidemic in the 80s in America and how basically um, government wasn't doing much it was actually doing it wasn't doing much to help these people who are becoming ill and they were in fact making things worse and trying to they were i mean i can't say for i wasn't there witnessing that but like the government from what i understand was really trying to basically kill these people through the measures they were taking. They weren't really helping them at all. Uh, nobody cared simply because um, it was happening to people who are um, in relationship with the same sex, uh, mostly men. And it's you, you get to see the story through the eyes of these two characters, mainly through the character played by Ma uh, Mark uh, Ruffalo. And, oh, just look at it. <laughs> oh my God. My hair just stood up on my arms. It's absolutely, just thinking about that. It was a wonderful story, but it's a really painful story. Um, I think it was done after a play. I remember watching some interviews many years ago, and uh, I think Matt Boomer, or both Matt, Matt Boomer, I think, uh, he was talking about reading this as a play when he was in high school and how it really helped him out because he was dealing with, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think he said that, he was dealing with 
about suicide uh, and depression and all these thoughts, you know, when he was younger because he was obviously having these feelings towards the other sex, um, towards the same sex. And he was, and not just that, I'm sure, he was just dealing with all these things and he didn't know how to cope. And then he came across this story and he, um, he was, yeah, just absolutely great story. And then to play it later, uh, to play one of the main characters of this story, which is based on real events, uh, must have been really a treat and a massive, massive responsibility for the actor to portray this uh, character because it, it, all of the story is based on real people from what I understand, from what I remember. And we also have Julia Roberts playing in this uh, movie. and She's a doctor who kind of helps these people who are basically getting more ill day by day and is trying to help them, is trying to advise them what to do, like to use protection and stuff like that. Um, and many other things. Um, but yeah, it was absolutely heartbreaking story. Um, it's also because you have the, um, the character of Mark Ruffalo, who is in a really tough relationship with his brother because he, his brother can't accept that he's in love with uh, another man or he, that he has feelings towards um, men and not women and all that. Um, um, yeah, all that nonsense in a way, you know, because it, all that is, how can you judge someone on the person they love? And it's not like they choose, I mean, you choose who you love in a way, but you don't, like, you make choices to be with, uh, in a relationship with someone, but you don't, like, if you fall for someone, like, if, I mean, fall for someone, that's such a stupid expression in a way. If you love someone, if you get to care and have feelings, for really deep feelings, or like romantic feelings for someone, it's not like, oh, I've chosen this, I want to love that particular person. Um, no, many times it doesn't have anything to do with that. It's just the way people feel. And it's like when you, you like strawberries and you don't like apples, no matter how much someone might try to come, that's a really poor, description, poor example. But if you like blueberries and someone tries to give you bananas, because bananas are great, they look so beautiful, I even have some on the table, <laughs> and they're like so beautiful or whatever, but you don't like that kind of thing, and they're trying to force it on you to, to be different, th th that's just not gonna, how, you're gonna, how are you gonna eat that when you know that's just not gonna do your body good because you can't, you don't feel right, you don't feel good eating that or having that in your life. Um, yeah, as I said, that's an absolutely pff, uh, terrible comparison um, or use of example. But just this thing, it really gets me, oh, I'm, I need to talk about the other film. But and this story really, really, when I saw it, it broke my heart. It, it's absolutely, um, I already felt the way I felt. But when I saw that film, it, it, it amplified my feelings and it multiplied them. It's absolutely like the way I feel, how strongly I feel about this thing. And I'm so annoyed that if I even have to sometimes like explain it to people, like why should I explain this to certain people? Like if you love someone, do I ask you who you love? On like why do you pick on others because there are people who do that and I, I just never understand oh I mean I can put myself in their shoes and understand but I could never really understand how someone can judge someone else based on like things like sexuality if they choose a certain thing it's their choice as long as it doesn't affect you they don't come and hit you in the head or something trying to murder you how are you how can you um, force something on someone uh, it's just beyond me and I could never accept that. Um, but yeah, this beautiful, this the normal heart is a, a beautiful portrayal of love at, at, in uh, really hard times uh, when uh, one of your partner is going through really, really horrible things and how the other 
part is coping with, you know, how, how do you deal? And it was also about a social situation going on, not just about, um, that's what made it so such a wonderful movie because you have this personal story taking place and there's this mass, more general story about this, all this community of people um, dying left and right, front and center, and it was just like, it's like an epidemic, you know, and um, thinking that was based on real events. Uh, it just makes me, anyway, you have to watch it if you haven't seen it, you're going to be crying, so, yeah, um, but it's good, it's good, like, it's a, you have to see that movie, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, Matt Boomer is, pff, my God, he, the things he did for that role, the, he was very responsible towards it, he, oh, yeah. Um, there was, I think there was another one I wanted to talk about, oh, should I leave, I'll leave this one, um, Chernobyl, which is a mini-series in five episodes about the events uh, that took place in Ukraine in 1986. Uh, they've recently done a mini-series which I thought was really well done, although they received some critics because there's no like Russian actors in it, the, you know, English actors and you get English accents and whatever. For me it was important that they brought this to the screen and the story and the way they've done it I thought it was really well done and it has to do with this um, premise like what is the cost of the truth and what is the cost of the lies um, how are you willing to deal with it and how are you willing to make compromises for the cost that might take place because of the choices you, you make but because this is about a society it's about a regime it's not about an individual necessarily although to a certain extent it is but it's more about things like out of control for people like me for example i don't have control over what someone much higher than me in a position does and that affects an entire not just country but but affects like you know entire continent maybe because when that reactor at chernobyl exploded um, thousands if not millions of lives have been affected and are still affected probably so i thought the TV series was really well done. Um, I, was talking, I, I said I was going to talk in another video, but I've already done it, I guess. So now I'll t I've saved the best for the last. <laughs> I can't remember if I've talked about this in uh, other videos, but one of my favorite stories in movies is uh, the Before Trilogy. It's uh, three movies. It's um, directed by Richard Linklater. Um, the main characters are played by Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy. And it's, as I said, three movies. And you have the first one was shot in Vienna, the second one was shot in Paris, and the third one was shot on an island in Greece. And um, all these three movies were shot nine years apart. Um, and it, what I love about this because you don't have explosions, you don't have blockbuster things like that, you know, like all these things, but you have absolutely wonderful stories. This, um, you basically have these two people, they meet in Vienna, well actually they meet on a train, if you don't know the story, although you've probably heard of it, um, although it's a niche film, you know, it's a, they have very faithful community of people who love this story because i said it's not blockbuster but uh, i think when you see it you just become a fan it's absolutely wonderful um and so yeah these people two people they meet on a train and he kind of convinces her to get off in vienna and um, yeah they kind of check out the town <laughs> the city um together for a night an afternoon and a night and um yeah, you get to see these two people, they're like kind of in their 20s or like just barely in their 20s and you see them talking. This, this movie, this trilogy is a lot, has a lot of dialogue. That's it just, if you want to see a great movie with great dialogue, this is the movie. Um, and obviously romantic. If you don't like romantic movies, you just like, 
I don't know, whatever. Uh, you might not like this because it's heavy, heavy, heavy in dialogue. But for me, this is a lesson in storytelling, in communication, in, in love. It, absolutely wonderful. Um, so yeah, you, these two people, they talk. There's In the first um, movie, there's a, a scene um, with this poet. He's a street poet, basically. He lives on charity from people he writes poems and he they give him something and that's what happens with these two people this couple kind of um, newly met people they walk on the street they meet him and he tells them oh give me something I'll give me a, a word and I'll uh, I'll write your poem and they just randomly pick the word milkshake and the guy writes a very beautiful poem and and then they go to argue that, oh, you know, he could have just written that poem and plugged in that word and for every person who who walks and he asks him to do that. And But, you know, it's just really funny how the two people interact, you know. Um, and then you have them, um, I'm going to spoil this, so now I'm going to, like, give some spoilers, obviously, because it's a trilogy. You, if you don't want to listen to this, you may want to stop. But for the second movie basically what happens in the first movie they at the at dawn they are separated she has to get on a train to paris i believe yeah and he has to go back to america and uh, yeah did i mention he's american and she's european and um so yeah they kind of part ways and it was you know in the 90s they didn't have like they didn't exchange phone numbers and they kind of lose track of each other but they agreed to meet um I think a year late, not a year later, a year later maybe, yeah, in the same spot, uh, but something happens and for the same movie we get to see them much later, as I said, nine, nine years later, and finding out what happened, why they did, did they show up at the meeting, uh, we, we get to find out what happened to them in all this time, all these years when they weren't together, and what happened, why they're not together, and he is the, the the character of Ethan Hawke. He plays um, Jesse. His it's his name. Uh, he plays. He's an author now, and he's in a bookshop in Paris. Um, and uh, yeah, she kind of goes there because he she reads about the event, and she goes to meet him there. And they get together again, and they have this afternoon because you have before uh, sunrise before sunset which is the film in paris and then before midnight the one in greece and then you get you get to see them uh, at the end of the second movie they're in paris and they kind of like he's like missing the plane <laughs> and they're basically like stay together that's kind of the thing and then we get to see them years later in greece they're like married and they have kids they have two twin daughters and it's really funny it's just a really beautiful portrayal of love because it's really really realistic like you have the young love do you have the uh, you see the love maturing more and more and um, you know you have that thing about first love and then you have the when you meet again and then you have the more mature love when they're like a family and they're like much older, they're like in their 40s and you know, people when they're in their 40s they think about the past a lot I guess and like there is a scene in there when uh, Celine, that's the name of the character Julie Delpy plays, she says, oh if you met me in the 20 years ago or yeah, uh, on the train would you still tell me to get off with you in, uh, in Vienna, would you still, you know, basically like me and he's like oh of course <laughs> and he's like yeah is it no i mean he is you can tell he's like you know yeah of course but at the same time you know you do wonder like choices you make how you can change your life but uh, i thought i think richard linklater and i think for the for the last two movies they've all been mentioned as the writers the actors as well um in the first movie they were really young and I think they were just mentioned as actors although they also wrote some of the dialogue uh, it wasn't yeah I think there was a bit of a debate there but that's you know that's not my business um, 
Yeah, um, so yeah, I think they were talking about that they will not make another movie. The trilogy is complete. What he wanted, what Richard Linklater wanted to do with the film was achieved. And um, also, if you haven't checked his film Boyhood, definitely check it out. It's a, I think it's across 12 years, a beautiful film. But back to the before trilogy. Um, he was, they were talking about, and I think there's a French movie, I think, called Amour, and they were saying that's the movie we could have made, but they've done it already, so there's no need for us to do something like that. So I don't know if they will make another movie after nine years have passed since uh, the last one, since before midnight. Um, in a way, I want to, but in a way, I, I, mean, I would love to see them again playing, but at the same time, I don't know, I do I feel like the trilogy is complete. The way it ended, uh, I just think if it ended in a really beautiful way. Um, and it's basically, without spoiling too much away, they're sitting on the edge of a terrace by, by the sea in Greece and it's midnight you know they're talking to each other and they're really it's a really tense scene uh, this movie actually has some nudity in it uh, as well um, but there's a really tense scene and th they're really clashing the characters are really clashing and you get to see them how they you know have a go at each other very very painful you know because it's so realistic like what Richard Linklater does with his movies which I guess for actors is really annoying. Um, uh, it's he, but for us to watch is absolutely wonderful. He has this character, like the dialogue said, and they, um, they have to say word by word. It's like it's done, and even the smallest emotion um, showed on their face or the, the gesture, everything is. You think it's so natural. It feels so natural. But he, the actors, they, um, it's just, they do it to the most minute detail. It's, um, I was shocked when I first found out, but it makes total sense because to have such a intimacy and such a portrayal, um, I don't think you could get it that right just from like fluffing about and just doing, oh, I'll just improvise. Sometimes these things work work improvisation works many times but in this case i think the way he works um yeah i think they've done a great great job um, and i wanted to mention i just remember there's a scene in the third movie in um, the midnight probably the order i like the most is the first the third the second but i mean i guess so uh, yeah i mean I, you, you can only take them as a whole because if you don't see the middle one you, there's many wonderful um, wonderful scenes in all of them but the one uh, there's a scene in the third one at the uh, table a table scene um, and it's more while in the second in the first and the second you you mostly have Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy interacting their characters in the third you have um, Greek characters as well, Greek actors, and there's a very massive scene, a long, I think there's like a 10 minute or 9, 12 minutes scene, dialogue scene between these people. They had to do it over and over again. I, I was uh, looking at interviews and I was saying it was really frustrating for some actors because some of them came from theater, they're not used to rehearse so much a uh, scene. But Julie Delpy and Ethan Hawke, they've worked with Linklater for so long, they were more accustomed to this. Um, but yeah, it's an absolutely wonderful scene. And there's this old lady who talks about her husband, how her his memory, her memory of him kind of fades away and she doesn't even, she almost doesn't remember how he looked. And it's a really endearing and the way they look at things. And uh, it's one of my favorite movies, which I think it's one of my favorite stories put on the screen. I think there's also screenplays. They've uh, provided screenplays. There's like books you can buy, but uh, the movies came first. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's, this is not known by enough people. I think it's a absolutely wonderful, wonderful story. Uh, it's 
defining like it defines romance but it just takes it to a whole other level like nobody dies in the film like i mean some characters dies but they don't die of old age and stuff like that so nobody dies there's no wars there's no explosions and yet it's it's all these characters and uh, the journey along these years they go through um absolutely wonderful um, there's many things, many, many movies I love. In the last video, you've, if you've seen that one, I was talking about Game of Thrones, if you haven't, uh, for a really long time. And I will probably be talking about more movies in the future. Um, many adapted for the screen after books. Um, but yeah, I wanted to share these with you. They're not in no order, as you can tell, I just been all over the place it's hard for me to put them in like top 5 or top 10 or top 20 I just well sometimes you might be in a mood for a different kind of film and something that touches you at a certain moment in time might not two years later but these are some of the movies that have really taught me a lot and made me feel a lot of emotions and yeah I, I would love I wanted to to share them with you I love to share these uh, great stories with you so yeah I'm currently working on a, on a book so on a new book so I need to get back to it um, the story about social media gender abuse domestic abuse um, love the power of believing in yourself and being strong enough despite internal and external noise so it's a really I'm really excited about this. I'm about sad because I didn't get my write, enough writing done yesterday compared to the other day when I wrote like 1300 words. But yeah, um, I need to get back to that. But in the meantime, if you'd like to try some of my books, my newest one um, is a collection of short stories called Whispers and Other Strange Stories. Um, yeah, there's 12 stories, each one has an illustration, um, and yeah, I would love to, they're kind of like horror, but they're not gory horror, so um, I had really good feedback so far on them, good reviews, mostly are, all of them are four or five stars, and I had, I've ha I have eight reviews so far, <laughs> so if you want to check them out and see what people say about them, and if it's something you might enjoy reading, uh, Please let me know if you do read them and please leave reviews. I would love to hear from you what you think of them. And yeah, keep um, subscribe to my channel, click that bell button so you get notifications when I upload a new video. And yeah, I can't wait to tell you more about the new book I'm working on. I've picked the names. The names are really important. The story is really coming together once I know these names. Um, just yesterday I decided suddenly in the morning i decided on the protagonist the male protagonist name the female name i decided many weeks ago and i decided on the puppy's name as well <laughs> and yeah i even have a boat and i'm really i can't wait yeah anyway um more on that in future videos um i still have to decide on the title i have a title but i don't know if i'm completely happy about it because i don't want it to sound like a complete romance so it's more dark than that so we'll see I might do a draw and pick a name. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching this. I'm just gonna sip. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed um, the video. Please leave comments below. And I would, if you have any movie recommendations, bring them on. <laughs> I can't wait. I love stories and movies and uh, have a great, great day. Bye.